Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. Hi, I'm Aunt Bonnie. I'm Grammy. I'm Grandpa. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Matt. I'm Megan. I'm Tracy. Okay. And we're some of the veggie boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of things on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. We're getting our morning started off by checking a few greenhouses and we're starting with the germination greenhouse. Right off the bat, you can see our onions that we gave a haircut to. They have really pushed out some extra growth and they're getting nice size to them. Before the time comes to where we can sell them, we might have to give them another haircut. And then over here are some peppers that we had recently seeded. We have some bell peppers along here, and we also have some Italian out. And once we move past all of the peppers that we had seeded for ourselves, we come up here and we have plenty of plug trays. Now there's all different types of stuff here. There's tomatoes, and then once we move up a little further, there's flowers, there's peppers, there's all different types of peppers to be completely honest. Now most of the stuff that's planted in here besides the 98 cell trays that we use for ourselves uh, is gonna be for sales. So all the peppers, all the tomatoes, all the basil, both red and green, the multiple different types of lettuce that we have seeded, that will all be for sale. So we don't have to be too concerned with it, but it will all need to be transplanted. It's got a bud. Wow, look at that. What are they called, hummingbird lunch? Yep. Wow. Now we're in the largest greenhouse, but both Aunt Rhonda and Aunt Bonnie are in here, and they're just walking around and making sure everything is growing nicely. There isn't too often that you find any weeds in here, but there will be birds that fly in and out of the greenhouse, and they can drop seeds as they're flying, so you do have to keep a lookout for that. Beyond that, though, our greenhouse is looking wonderful. You can see everything is growing really, really nicely. Everything is starting to get large size to it. And even though it is very, very early in the year for us, we still have people showing up and trying to get baskets and other flowers. Something we've been keeping a close watch on, and I'm sure a lot of you have been following along with at home, is all the plug trays that need to be transplanted. Well, we've moved them from the middle table because we needed to put pots there. For the flowers, this is all we really have left to transplant and then we have a few trays that are sitting here thankfully the girls are really good at transplanting so not only do they get the flowers transplanted but when they have extra time they help us with the vegetables before we head down over the hill and start checking those greenhouses we are going to get the farm market set up and while i have you here even though we feel it is early not everybody feels that way uh, we did move some vegetables and some herbs up here to sell even though it's small in comparison to the display we will have later on you can see we have some lettuce up here. We also have some Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, and even kohlrabi. And once we move down from the coal crops, the vegetables that can handle a little colder weather, we have plenty of herbs up here. So if anybody is passing by, they can pick something up like they've been doing with the French tarragon. Even though it's just a small amount compared to what we do later on, it is exciting to see plants put out for sale, and it's been wild to see all the customers coming and picking up flowers. People are excited for spring, and I can't really blame them because all of us are really excited for spring as well. Matthew and I have now got everything pulled out of the cooler. All we need to do yet would be fill everything up and then finish cleaning and sanitizing. I had wiped off all of the counters already. We still do need to do a little bit of vacuuming. Then we gotta worry about our doors and the shopping carts and then we should be good. Now my dad was at the wholesaler yesterday and picked up some stuff that we need. So we're just gonna be filling up from inside the cooler today. We usually go to the wholesaler two to three times a week just to make sure we have plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables for the customers.
the girls called me over to the largest greenhouse to let me know what they need help with today. Uh, one big thing is this needs to be moved outside because they need the space where it's sitting. So we're going to have to move the cookie monster outside at some point today. And we have to do our best to try and keep it filled up with soil for them. Even though it's going to be outside, they still need pots and they need trays filled. So if we can keep this filled up with soil, that'll be a big help. Even though it may not look too large, and it really isn't, it's not that big, it does take up a lot of space right here at the front of the greenhouse. And this is all space that we could be putting flowers and other potted plants. So there's actually one, two tables that fit in this area and we're not able to use it because the machine sits there. So we're gonna have to move that out today. Aunt Rhonda is watering. What are you working on, Grammy? Chives. Chives? Looks like she's cutting chives up. She's splitting them so that she can make more pots. Was this out of your garden? Actually, it was out of Bonnie's garden. Oh, Bonnie's garden. Speaking of Bonnie, what are you working on this morning? Geraniums. Geraniums, Basket. they look nice. These rope basket geraniums are really, really popular and we sell plenty of them. And Bonnie is making up the little baskets so that they're ready to sell when the customers are ready. Right away this morning, we're trying to tackle a big issue that we've been dealing with, and that issue is water pressure. Because of the way our water system is set up, you can only water one greenhouse at a time, which doesn't sound like a big issue by itself, but when we have so much that needs to be watered, it then becomes an issue. But dad, who has given himself a new nickname, has an idea. So why didn't you tell everybody that you're an inventor? I can't give up all my secrets. And here we go, dad's completed idea. We have 500 gallons of water sitting here that we will be able to pull out for this greenhouse. The rest of the greenhouses are still gonna run off the original lines, but this largest greenhouse was the one that always suffered with water pressure, and it just so happens to be our largest greenhouse. So these reservoir tanks that we have will help us out in the long run. We have another little reservoir tank and a jetter pump, and that will allow us to water at least two greenhouses at one time, which will make everything run a lot quicker and will make things run smoother. What do you want? You want me to color with you? <laughs> color? Okay. I came down to help Daniel get the animals taken care of. He just got silage dumped in for the cattle and I just brought them their grain. We've actually had to change up our feeding a little bit since the grass is growing so nicely in the pasture. The cattle have not been eating all their silage and grain. So we've had to dial it back a little bit, which is what we expected. And we're happy about it because that's saving us money in the long run. Now all that's left for the animals is get the chickens fed and the eggs collected. Now what's neat about this machine is that there's a set of weights underneath this piece of metal. And what that does is it allows each egg to be weighed individually to make sure that we're getting the right sizes. So right off the bat we have jumbo, extra large, large, medium, and small. Now thankfully a lot of our eggs are at the extra large stage, which is where we want them to be. We do have a few smaller ones, but it's not too many. And the thing that we have to do occasionally is we go through and re-weigh each one of these scales in here to make sure that we have an accurate weight. And as many of you have seen, we do this job basically every day. So this machine comes in handy. It allows us to separate and carton the eggs much faster than we would have been able to if we were weighing them one at a time by hand. I just got done grading eggs. We have two and a half boxes here ready to head up to the farm market. And now I have some empty baskets to start collecting eggs. It's so funny, when I go into the back to collect eggs, all the chickens run in there. Now that I'm out here, all the chickens are coming out here. They just love to be by me, I don't understand why.
Just finished collecting the eggs and we're left with two beautiful full baskets. It took me a little bit longer to get the chickens all taken care of. I had to feed and collect eggs by myself, but that's because the boys are working on other jobs. It's nice. Right now, a lot of the cattle are out in pasture, so I just wanted to come over and look at them for a minute. There's a sense of satisfaction that comes from looking at cattle on pasture. I don't know what it is. Uh, if you've never experienced it, you should try it sometime. This makes me happy. Hey, what are you looking at? Shoes. Yeah, look at the shoes. I'm filling trays because we're planting a bunch of peppers up in the germination greenhouse. So I'm filling all these trays so we can go up there and plant seeds in them. And dad's actually gonna be gone all afternoon because he needs to go pick up some mulch so that we can do more planting. So it's most likely gonna be just us boys working on doing some seeding this afternoon. dad is on his way i'm heading up to the germination greenhouse because i'm going to be helping matthew with seeding and today's really exciting because what we're going to be seeding is stuff that we'll eventually be planting out into the fields and that always makes us excited so what are we going to be seeding today well we're going to be doing 10 different varieties of peppers and if we want to be really technical it's actually 14 varieties because we're doing all different types of bell peppers we're just about ready to get started matthew has got all of the trays already filled we're writing some information down in the book, and then it'll be time to start seeding. To get started with hot peppers, we're going to be seeding some poblanos. deal we just got the poblanos finished uh, since we're getting closer to lunch i'm actually gonna tag these and cover them usually we have other people working on that but daniel is still moving some seed around and matthew had to run and do something else so right now i'm by myself there we go poblano We just got the poblano seeded and watered, and we also got the notification that it is now lunch. So we're gonna head down and eat. Let's see, let's see. What are we having for lunch today? Ooh, looks like we got some hot dogs here, and it is a hot day, but Grammy has made ham and bean soup. Woohoo! It's not too dry in greenhouse number five. Mostly the edges are drying out. So I'm just trying to hit them with some water and then this greenhouse should be finished. Greenhouse number five is a big concern for us because it has all of our coal crops in it. So we try and keep a close eye on it just so that nothing dries out too much. I have now joined Matthew up in the germination greenhouse. He just got finished seeding some hot wax peppers and now he's working on jalapeno. He 
You know, every farm has something that's like really cool and you're like, man, I wish I had that on my farm. I'm sure for a lot of people, this air seeder that we have is one of those things. In like two or three minutes, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So 500 seedlings of jalapenos seeded. And while I was talking there, Matthew just got 600 done. Altogether, I think if we did not have that air seeder, we would be pretty lost. I mean, we would find a way to get the job done. It would just be a lot more difficult. The fact that we can do these trays of 100 and go up to 500 in one tray just makes the job go by so much quicker and makes it a lot more efficient. We'll stop talking about the air seeder for now because I don't want to make people too jealous. If you'd like a more in-depth video about the air seeder, we could do that later on. But for now, just know this thing is wonderful. Now we finished off the jalapeno. We're moving on to hot cherry now. As you guys know, we struggled to get hot cherry pepper seeds early on, but now we have plenty. Well, everyone, we are calling it quits in the germination greenhouse. We just got everything covered for the night, actually. The last thing we finished off with was our long hot peppers. We still have a few more that need to be seeded, but this is a good stopping point. We got all the hot peppers taken care of today, but we're gonna have to do a few more planting, so we'll be seeding more later on. I made my way into the farm market because we are coming up on closing time. So in a few minutes, we'll be putting everything away. <laughs> We have made it up into the house for dinner tonight and it is all on the table. It looks like we're having burgers. We also have some zucchini, potatoes, and Brussels sprouts. And then if I look over there, I'm seeing a little bit of tapioca pudding. Since all the food is now on the table, you guys know what that means. This is where we're going to end the video today. I would like to thank everyone for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye 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 bye! bye, -bye. bye, -bye.